Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am your host for the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. Oh yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am so happy about this series coming up right now. It's called The Fitness Journeys, um, Nutritional Journeys, Spiritual Awakenings, Fitness Journeys, whichever one. But either way, it's aligning your body with the physical universe and yourself and just getting yourself prepped up to continue a healthy life. Um, Right now, I'm going to be interviewing this incredible superstar, his name is Bernard Brown. Bernard Brown has lost 172 pounds. What in the world? Wow. Welcome to my show and thank you so much for inspiring me and inspiring the world. And I'm really curious to know about your journey. Um, how long have you been on this journey? Yeah, so it's uh, been about six years. About six years. So in six years, you lost 172 pounds. Yeah, and it was it was really less than that. The the weight was probably all gone in 2019, and then I've just been maintaining it for about two years now. So, what made you make this decision? What was the turning point in your life where you're like, you know what, I have to lose weight? Yeah, yeah. So I've I've always been a heavier kid. Like um, one of the stories I always remember, like I, I wasn't even allowed to play pot one football. They said I was too big, and they were afraid I was going to hurt other kids. Um, so I've just always been a bit. I entered high school with 305 pounds in ninth grade. Um, and then when I graduated, I stopped playing football. And then when I graduated, um, actually my senior year, I started getting migraines and, it, you know, it wasn't anything too serious. Um, but then over the years, it started to get more frequent and I had one that didn't go away. And so uh, I checked into a hospital to see what was going on and they did a CT scan and they found a spot in my brain. And it's essentially they said, hey, we don't know what that is, but it's got to come out. And so they were like, hey, you can stay here now or you can come and check in in a week. And so... Um, I said, hey, I should probably go. At the time I was married, I was like, I should probably go home and tell my, my wife and, you know, get prepared. And so a week later, I went through nine-hour brain surgery. Wow. And in, in recovery, my wife at the time, we found out we were pregnant. She literally told me I was in recovery in the bed, and she was like, I'm pregnant. And so um, just remembering and thinking like, hey, I got to be around for my children. And so um, when I checked in the surgery, I was 395 pounds, and I really just knew. They never said it was correlated to my weight. But I just knew this is something that I can't control. Like whatever right. happened to the brain, I don't know what it was. They, it was a vascular lesion, pretty much like a jumble of veins that was expanding over time. But I was like, hey, this is something I can't take control of. And when I got out, I just got motivated and went to it. Uh, 48 hours after that, um, I was home and in recovery. And about a month or so later, I started. So the brain surgery was like an awakening to what you needed to do to survive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, wow. I, I, yeah. I, I knew I, um, I knew I had to make a change and it wasn't, I didn't need any more message than that. It was just like, Hey, this is clearly a signal of something and it just woke me up. And so I just wanted to, um, take the opportunity to grow myself spiritually and focus on who I wanted to be. And I just was tired. I was tired of being overweight. I really was. And, um, I just wanted to do something about it. So they really started off. I just took small baby steps from there. What are some baby steps? How do you start? I mean, there are millions of people that are in that point at that point right now that don't know how to start. Sometimes people feel it's too late. Just keep going. Like, why even try to lose weight? It's going to take too long. I mean, did did you go through all that process too? Like, yeah, yeah. So that and that was that's the spiritual part for me. The spiritual awakening was definitely changing my mindset about it. Previously, it was always I need to go find a diet. Oh, I need to go lose weight. I need to do X, Y, and Z. And one of the things that I remember so vividly was just when I believed and visualized for the first time who I wanted to be. And I remember being in the shower and laughing at myself because I really believed it. And so instead of starting with, oh, I need to go do X, Y, Z based on this diet, it was, all right, visualize, like, who do you want to be? Like, who do you want to become? And I just sat with that. I just sat with it. And it wasn't even really intentional. It was just, again, I think, you know, a force of the situation. Um, And then after that, it was like, okay, now I can take baby steps. And I switched from looking for outcomes. One of the big things I was doing was I was getting on the scale. Like, all right, I want to lose weight. Let me check the scale. And that was kind of deterring me from the process. It's like, hey, yeah. you can get to your goal, but you got to do it in the small baby steps. And so 
I just started taking small steps and like, um, yeah, it was, it was that shift that I think really catapulted everything and, elite, uh, you know, allowed me to really see progress. Before you started the baby steps and you had that visualization, what was that visualization? What did you see? Yeah, it was literally, it was like an out of body experience. Cause it was, I saw myself, but I saw like exactly what I look like now. It was so eerie and it, I, I remember laughing because I was like, I really, it was weird. It was very, it's hard to explain and put even put into words. It just wasn't, yeah, it wasn't me who I saw in the mirror. And that's when I knew I believed. That's when I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen because I really believed in it and I wanted it versus, and it was for me. And it was for what the, the right purpose is. And that was, again, part of the, the shift that was really needed, I believe. That definitely sounds like your higher your higher self coming to you to communicate to you to be like, dude, who you see in the mirror right now, that's not who you are. And who you're visualizing, that that's your real you. Exactly. Yep. That's pretty, that's amazing and intense. Yeah, yeah, it was. It definitely was. It still, it still gave me chills. It kind of shook me up and everything. So it was a very pivotal moment. And then, so what were the first baby steps that you took? Yeah. Yeah, so it was interesting. So for me, I kind of knew some of the issues, right? Like I feel like I had just shut my metabolism completely down. I was a very, I was very bad at skipping breakfast, oftentimes lunch, and then I was just pigging out at night. I would get home and be so hungry. And this wasn't even later in life. This was like even in high school, playing football. Hey, I just got up in the morning, you go to school, you, you know, you go to class, you and then after football practice, you come home and eat everything. But when you stop playing, I stopped playing in 11th grade. So 12th grade, college comes around and you keep that habit up, I wasn't doing the same exercises that I was before. And so the first thing I did was, okay, let me make the shift. For two weeks, I said, I don't want to eat anything after seven o'clock. Let me just stop the late eating and see what happens. And it was more about not the outcome again. It was just, can, I'm going to celebrate. If I meet this mark, I'm going to stop here. I don't care what the results are. I'm just going to be glad that I had discipline to do this thing. And when I did that and I saw I could do it, it just was like, okay, now I'm confident. I know I can do whatever I need to do. And how long did it take? Like, was it a week or two um, that you were able to continue that nothing to eat after seven? How long did it take until you're like, okay, I can take, I can, I can go to the next step? Yeah, it, it was, it was pretty immediate. I want to say, actually, and the other thing that I planned was fasting. So it was like, okay, the after seven is like a preface. And then it was like, okay, just the concept of fasting for your spiritual, right? And the, the, the eating part. And so I would say it was probably only another week or so. And then I led up on the seven o'clock, right? And again, that was the thing that I think helped across the whole time was not being so hard on myself and forgiving myself. Okay, you say you don't eat after seven, but if you eat at 7.30 or eight, it's okay, just rebound. Yeah. But before it's like, man, I messed up, got to start something new. But it was again, the mindset, mindset shift and it didn't take long at all. And then it was, you know, small changes from there. So after, after not being so hard on yourself, allowing, giving yourself the flexibility to go a little past seven, um, when did you start to see a shift in your actual weight from that tiny little change? Yeah, so it was, it was, so another thing, so after the recovery, so during the um, recovery period, it was a lot of just, you know, making it through about the two week mark. And then the, I did the fast and the fast was the, also the kickoff to going back to exercise. And so my job at the time offered a 90 minute lunch. And if, if you worked out, you got 90 minutes instead of an hour. And so I always played, but even as, even at 300 plus pounds, I always played basketball. It just wasn't frequently. Mm -hmm. That and the seven o'clock within that first week, I think I dropped like 10 pounds. It was, it was, it was insane. It was wow. just, yeah, it was just quick. And again, it was, I think I had to reprogram my body and restart my metabolism. And once I started it, that first 10 pounds just came off immediately. And then I think, I want to say like the first 60 was within that first four months, like three or four months. And then I hit the plateaus, right? But initially, once I got into the cadence of just not eating after seven, moving, juicing, and other healthier things into my breakfast. And I was like, hey, you're not eating breakfast and lunch anyway. Force yourself, but just eat something healthy during that time, right? And so with those two things combined, the first 60 was pretty quick. And, um, okay, so you went from not eating um, breakfast, lunch, and then you're, you're doing the fasting thing. But when you did start to incorporate some type of meal, it was juicing? Yep, so I did. What, I, were you juicing? Were you juicing veggies or fruits or mixing it together? 
Yeah, I was doing everything. It and again, it was one of those. I don't like. The, it really was a a kind of a weird win out of the situation. I didn't like eating breakfast, and it wasn't natural. So it was like, okay, but I can drink breakfast. And so I was yeah. just like, I was just like anything fruit, anything you name. I even made the mistake. I put an avocado in one. It was terrible. Do not put avocados in smoothies. It just wasn't good. <laughs> like, it was just like anything. And again, this is my opportunity to get in as much healthy foods as I can. Yeah. And again, it just turned into, you know, you get a straw and it's just sipping and it became an exercise. And okay, lunch, I can have a salad or something on the healthier side, a sandwich, you know, even, you know, being okay with getting something that you want. And then dinner, I literally was able to eat whatever I wanted, even dessert. It was just the seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock at the latest, start to really temper that, and that started to really change my body. I think. So you're, and then you say that once you hit the sixty pound mark, that's when that, you plateaued. Yep. Yeah. So I think I. So what do you there. do? Yeah. What do you do after that? Like once you plateau, how do you even work through being motivated after you plateau? Yep. So you got to go. So you you have to deal with the failure, and that was something that I didn't expect, but I found a way to really power through it through through reading and the other spiritual exercises. So like the seven habits of highly effective people, the power of habits, all these things that I was reading were helping me to see like in that failure is an opportunity to find something new about yourself or find a new way to overcome something. And so I was like, okay, yes, I gained 10 pounds back. All right, I've plateaued, I've stopped, I'm doing the same things. Oh man, I binged, I had a terrible day, but okay, how can I rebound? And then it's like, okay, go back to that visualization. Who do you want to be? What is the why? And one of the things from the books I was reading was like, it's, it's a lot more difficult to say, I want to lose weight just to lose weight and lose weight. But when I connected it to, I need to be here for my children. And I want to do this to be a better version of myself. Holding on to that made it a lot easier to start the next thing. And I would just switch it up. Okay, what's, what's something my body hasn't experienced yet? Okay, I was vegan for a month. All right, I'm just going to be vegan for a month to see what it does. I, don't think I, I didn't lose a lot of weight being vegan, but it was, again, the discipline part. Where it's like, okay, I can do that. I know that I can do these things and it just reset me. And then it's like, okay, that didn't work as well as I thought, but what's the next thing? And it just was a constant grind. If you look at my chart on I did my fitness pal and I was tracking my weight, I mean, it's up and down. There was None of this was just smooth sailing. There was a lot of failure points. I mean, I gained 30 pounds back at one point, but then you just keep grinding. And again, I think that was the part my body had to adjust, you know, slowly but surely. So what, what broke the, um, what broke the plateau? Harder, harder fasting. So this is the part that is um is the the real challenge that is is it was difficult to overcome, but it was well worth it. Like I was doing three day fast, and then the most I did was a five day fast, just five days of straight water. And wow. Yeah, and that I think that does again. I'm not so sure on all the science of, but I think it does a few things. It changes my relationship with food. It was like, oh my goodness, you you controlled yourself. And you didn't have to eat for three, four, or five days. So that means when you're hungry. And you want to go get that snack, you know you don't have to get it because you did no food for this extended period of time. And then also you lose a lot of weight. You, I mean, you, I lost like 12, 13 pounds every time I fasted. And again, it wasn't the healthiest way to do it long term, but it was a way to break through that wall. And then once you do that, you get back on that scale. And it's like, okay, now we're back. Now we're back where I need to be. What's the next thing? And you just keep, keep chipping away. What's considered fasting? What was considered fasting for you? Yeah, so... So like that means no juicing even? No, no juice, nothing. So I would do, I did, there were times when I would do like a three or four day juicing fast where it was like, okay, I'm only going to eat smoothies. But then that was, um, that I think that was again, just more discipline, but the, the fasting was just water. And it would just be, I would just pick a start time and set out my goal. Okay, I want to do two days, three days, five days. And I would just drink and chug water. Um, and here recently, I still do the fast. So I've recently I've been doing teas as well to help, um, but it's mostly just water when I do a pass. And when you finally broke that, that, um, that barrier, that, that wall that you were hitting and you saw yourself losing weight after fasting, what did you jump on next? Did you start exercising again? Did you, or were you playing basketball? Were you doing anything during fasting too? Or where is it just fasting? <laughs> yeah, so with the fasting, I would, I learned quickly that you can't do the exercise so you can do like the first day or so, but if yeah. you try that, I mean, I was out there and it's just too sluggish. So I would definitely yeah. stop working out. But then after the fast, I started to say, okay, I'm going to come back out of this as healthy as possible. And then I really did turn up the exercises. I want to say it was the beginning of 2018. I did a, a, um, 
span of 120 days, I think, and I only missed like seven days of the gym. And it was just relentless. Like, okay, now the discipline is I got part of the diet down. I'm good with the food. Now I got to get in the gym and go hard. So at work, I would do basketball. But then again, early on, it was like, okay, well, I did it, but I'm home now. It's Friday. Do I really want to go to the gym today? And I would miss it. And then when I, after, you know, the plateaus will hit, I was like, no, nah, I need to, I need to turn it up. And so I would just commit. I would get home and be like, it was literally a night. I was like, man, I didn't go today. It was like 11 o'clock in my, the, the neighborhood I lived in had a gym and I got up. I was like, nope, I'm not going to miss today. And I'm going to make sure I go as much as possible. And I was going six, six out of seven days and, and most of the time every day and just doing something, right? It wasn't as stream as basketball. Like basketball is really high cardio. Like you're running a lot. I would at least go, you know, get on the treadmill, lift some weights. Um, and I did that for a good 120 days. And, and that was, again, I think that pushed me through for another good 40, 40 to 50 pounds. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And, and Bernard, what you what about the pain? Like, I know when I'm building, like, man, sometimes my joints and stuff, like, what? <laughs> like, sometimes I'm throbbing, you know? Like, what? It, it, I can't imagine all that weight you're losing and how hard it must have been on your joints, your ligaments, your nerves, everything. Like, what did you do about the pain in between? Oh, yeah, it was definitely painful. And uh, uh, I would ice bath. And I just had, that's the only thing I could do that would help. I would literally wow. ice bath. Yeah, and now and now I've been doing uh, Epsom salt baths too, but the the icing was really the only way. Some days it was like, okay, if I don't do it, there's no way I'm gonna play ball in the next two or three days. So I would just, um, you know, again, get my hey, I need six bags of ice, get in the tub, and just try to get some of that inflammation out, and, and you know, give my body a chance. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> wow, Bernard, you are a rock star. That's incredible, man. <laughs> So, geez, what kind of advice, like, can you give somebody that is where you used to be? Let's say you've got a home dog and he comes up to you and he's like, hey, man, I'm 400 pounds. Like, I don't really think there's any use for me to even try. Like, what do you tell them? Yeah, and and I think it's the it's a combination of a few things. Like, the first thing is, is to take care of yourself. And I don't mean, like, in the physical sense, but take care of yourself mentally and give yourself a break. Like, I was, I was so... The failures had programmed my mind to think, like you said, like, can I do this? Like, what's the purpose? But when you give yourself some, you know, love and care and say, wait a second, like, we can do this. You can work with yourself. You can overcome whatever this is. I think that's the first starting point. And then it is, I really think that visualization is important. You can't, and again, it's just how what worked for me. Getting caught up in the diet was the failure. Like, oh, I need to do this. And it's like, no, like, sit down, take your time and be patient with yourself. I wasn't patient. I literally told myself, I'm not going to look for results for two years. And I think that was the change. Even though I saw results, the mindset that I forced was do not expect anything for two years. Do the work, keep your head down, and don't worry about the results. If you do what you're supposed to do, something will happen. And either you're going to commit to it now or you're going to keep looking up in a year and another year and you haven't done anything because you told yourself you could. So I think, you know, those things are the starting point. And I think everybody has to find what works for them. Like, and find what your failure point is. Like, if you yeah. know, again, I knew my issue was delayed eating. So, okay, let me just tackle this in a small way and see if I can do it for a short period of time and then celebrate. You have to celebrate. I think if you don't celebrate, then you don't feel like you've accomplished anything. And if you're looking for the weight, that's out of your control. So celebrate the discipline. Celebrate the changes that you're making in yourself. It's a lot easier to build on. How do you celebrate that? Yeah, it's literally like, and it's weird because it is literally like giving yourself that love and being proud of yourself. And that's the part where mentally I would never, it was never enough. Like if I lost five pounds, it's like, man, you only lost five pounds. No, celebrate, celebrate one pound. Anything that yeah. you do, celebrate, do something and make sure that, you know, it can be some like tonight I'm going to watch a movie because I lost a pound, like do it. And it, it's just a correlation. The synapses will fire. Like it will happen in your brain. It just has to be correlated. Say, I'm doing this because of X. And you will feel like you celebrate yourself. Bernard, you need to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I keep hearing that. <laughs> Seriously, like, wow. This is an incredible story. So um, how can how can people find you on social media? Yes. Yeah, so, because I found you, I found you on Instagram. When I saw your page, I was like, what in the world? This is incredible. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, uh, my handle is Big Vision with two Z's instead of a, a S. So B I G V I Z Z I O N. 
Um, so I do some posting now, but a lot of it is the, a lot of it is more the spiritual stuff now, as well as some of the weight loss. I have been thinking about getting back and sharing some of the story. Um, but again, I you know just I just want to help. So if you know it's my call, and I'll get to it. Oh yeah, and you're doing that for sure. And so right now, 172 pounds later, do you want to continue? Are you good where you're at? Do you do you have a different vision now? Where where are you at? Yeah, so so my goal originally was 220, and I really like again. I I don't think I was 220 since probably like sixth, seventh grade. So again, I was in ninth grade, 305. I'm hovering around that, you know, sometimes up to 230 range, 235 at some points, but. I got one more push to see if I can get under like 200, just maybe just just to see. But mm -hmm. I also feel like now it's just about the, the discipline and the maintenance and how do I feel? And I feel great. I, I mean, I'm just I'm I play basketball and I'm doing things that I could never even imagine. Like I didn't even know I could play basketball this way. And so I'm just celebrating it. And um, when I get the urge again or again, I have that signal or that sign, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure I got another push. And um, but yeah, I think it's just about refining now. And my body's still changing. I still feel um different at times and, and i think now it's just kind of fun to explore a little bit oh yeah for sure and what's your like nutrition habit at now like what what type of habits do you have yeah so it's similar now so i definitely still i do like a one day fast at least every week and then i just uh two weeks ago i did a, a four day fast it was supposed to be wow. five but i had my kids coming on the friday and i was like i can't be slow because that third and fourth day gets hard and i was like well if they're gonna be here i can't be slow uh, so I still do that. And again, that really helps the mental and the spiritual side of things. And then again, the weight it helps your body. You can't eat. If you do a four or five day fast and you try to eat something bad, your body will reject it literally. So that helps me. Uh, so I, I try to do that like once every two months at the latest. And, you What's know, an more. example on how your body rejects eating something bad? Yeah. So the first time I did a fast, I thought, oh, I did a fast. Now I'm going to go and, and pig out. I'm going to eat. And go I was in like, and out. <laughs> and, this, and this was... I was in, I had just got out of college. So maybe I was like 23. So this was, this was before the weight loss stuff. This was just because I wanted to, to do it. I just try it out. Yeah, I was just trying it. And I went and got a cheeseburger and I took one bite and my throat literally closed up. But you also feel some clarity and like your digestive system gets a break and you don't, your body doesn't want it. And it's like your mind clear, my senses get, your senses get higher and you just feel better and you don't want to go back to that food. Like it takes an effort to go back to eating bad. And it happens. Again, I, there's times when I do a fast, I'll get my juice and salad the first day and then I want something good for dinner. Right. And then, okay, now I'm back and just managing. But again, I think it's the balance and I, my body responds differently to the food. I believe, I think it's hormones. It's a lot, of, it's a lot going on with fasting. I believe that when you do have something bad, your body reacts better and it processes it better. And then again, you start to realize like now, um, I do a lot of fasting in the morning and then I'll do a juice or a smoothie or like a breakfast, a regular breakfast and then dinner. And then I might like last night I had a smoothie for dinner instead of I had because I had a regular lunch. And then mm -hmm. some days I just have a cheat day and I just, OK, I'm going to eat whatever I want today and just keeping a, I think that balance is helpful. Whereas before it's I got to do this forever. I got to eat keto forever or just do this yeah. one diet forever. That's 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 a real challenge. But the diversity of fasting smoothies tea kombucha like different things and then okay now i can take a little break and relax a little bit to catch my breath and start it back up and i think that was the magic for me was not expecting perfection at all times um so yeah wow what an incredible story seriously bernard brown everybody he's lost 172 pounds in under seven years right Wow, in line with his spiritual self, and he's there for his kids, has more energy than he's ever had since high, since before high school. Like, wow, seriously, I'm just really proud of you. I'm really happy for you, and you've inspired me to keep going as well. Thank you so much for being on my show. I hope you get more followers so that you can keep inspiring people the way you've inspired me, and I'm sure all of my listeners are super duper inspired. Keep going, keep yourself motivated. Keep listening to that higher self, and you got this, man. You got it. Thank you. For, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Little Less Fear podcast.